So, uh, I feel like like a landscape gives more like of a narrative sense, whereas portrait doesn't necessarily feel like it has to. My name is Stefan Borsing, and I am a visual artist. How old are you? I'm 32. I grew up in Maine, and then when I was 19 or 20, I joined the Army. And I was in the Army for nine and a half years. And I got out and uh, wound up here in Lake Charles. What happens is uh, I'll just kind of, I'll show up and then whatever mood I'm in, I'll just try to uh, select a color palette that it feels right to me about it. Um, and then from there, I'll just go and do my mixing and stuff, which takes about, that takes like an hour-ish. Um, and during that time, I'll, I'll kind of brainstorm some like compositional ideas. Um, just because if I were to, to just show up and just like start slinging paint around, uh, it'd be very easy for, for things to get muddied up and uh, not, not be you know, something that I would want to look at. Uh, and also, Doing it that way, to me, uh, gives people who want to discredit abstract art, you know, a platform to stand on. <laughs> so that's unfortunately it's a valid argument right now because I mean people see see some of the art that is considered you know fine art out there, and if you don't understand the process and stuff that that happens on the artist side of it. It's very easy to say, oh, my kid could do that. Um, so that's one of the things that I try to escape. And another way that I do that is, uh, like once I'm at this point, once I figured out generally orientation, um, I'll go back in by hand and enhance areas. Like, uh, like on this piece specifically, like I'm gonna, like I already know that I'm gonna be working up in here quite a bit um, to, to widen out the range of contrast so like it's it's kind of muddy in here like between the lightest point and the darkest point so i'll go in there and uh, instead of having just that narrow band of contrast i'll you know i'll make the brightest points brighter and the darkest points i'll push back so that that narrow band will all, all of a sudden become like that it's almost like the visual history of this body of work that I've been doing. So it's you, I mean, are you, you could probably sell this, because this is, I mean, it doesn't look anything like your work, except it's got elements of all of it. Yeah, this is a lot more Jackson Pollock here now. Right, yeah, <laughs> this is way more like bullshit, you know, stand 10 feet away and just throw stuff at it, but no, this is just like layer upon layer of, uh, you know, leftovers from every piece that I've done in this, in this body of work. Yeah, some of it depends on, uh, what I'm, a, a large part of it is like what I'm feeling, like when I start, when I sit down, when I'm picking those palettes. Um, like this one, for example, um, you know, I, I, it was not a very good day for me. Um, and part of what I'm trying to do with this work is, is to capture that, that moment, that emotion. Um, even if it is, you know, the work is spread out over like 10 days or something, uh, to have that initial moment to work from after that moment 
uh, is, is, is part of it. Um, so, like some of them, uh, typically if you, if you see reds being used, um, it, <laughs> it's generally not a very good day for me. Um, when you'll see, like, to, like generally the, the the turquoises and deep blues and stuff are just kind of, uh, just kind of like chilling out, almost, you know, just kind of showing up to work for a day. Um, a lot of the, a lot of people ask me like, what inspires this work, and sometimes it's just a need to produce something. Like it's not necessarily some profound thing. Mm -hmm. um, if I were to wait until I was ready to work whenever I made something, I would never work. And so with this one, like obviously, you know, we have these huge areas of contrast, but there's also this spot that, you know, sometimes you're just, you're just kind of numb to things mm -hmm. and um, there's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's a natural way to, to process things and, and deal with them. So um, white has been something that I've been really interested in because I feel like a lot of art doesn't find a use for white other than being like a background or a negative space or something. And while those things do have uses on their own, I'm specifically talking about like tones of white. Um, and I'm not talking about like that white on white painting that sold for, right. <laughs> <laughs> sold for, you know, millions, but, and my intent is that once I'm like finished with this or, you know, at least ready to move on from it and start something else, you know, I, I could always return to this work, but, mm -hmm. you know, just start like the next chapter almost. And um, still use this Pete like this as well, your... No, like kind of retire this. Oh, okay. And then, uh, and then... Like this is the story of this, of this series. Yeah. And, and what I would like to do is just put it on a stretcher and then, you know, have it be a piece in this, in this body. That would be pretty cool. You said you're a douchebag, actually. Yeah. So what are we? What are you making? I don't have a name for it. You, you gave me a name in the text. I just made that up in the text. Uh, I, I like what it, it was. I called it Mr. Cedar's nostalgic bathroom wallpaper. Also called Pickle Rick. <laughs> Pickle Rick. I think copyright. Sorry. My name's Ty Newcomb. I'm 22 years old. I'm a poet. And. I'm also a full-time worker. What do you mean by that? It means I work more than 40 hours a week. So when I say I'm a poet, I mean poetry is my hobby, essentially, for now, for now. Smell this first, I made this. It's really good. It's a mandarin and clove infused vodka. That smells really good. Yeah, you like clove? Reminds me of I like the mandarin, smell actually. The clove cigars. Take a, yeah, take a swig? What? You gonna take a swig? No. It's really hard to drink by itself because it's so strong. Yeah, you have ice? Yeah. Okay, I'll get that in a little bit. Do you need to grind it up? I, we have the... No. Actually, I'm gonna chill the glass first. Like a fancy bartender. First off. Smell that dill vodka I made. It smells like dill. It smells really good. I just started doing infusions and I love it. Did you do, uh, I saw a thing for tomato infusion so that it's, uh, it's tomato infused vodka to go in a Bloody Mary. Yeah. I actually, I really want to try that. I wanted to do a bell pepper infused vodka. It sounds so good. Bell pepper just seemed like it would go really well. I'm going to pull up my recipe just in case. Am I forgetting anything? I don't know. That's a, that's a hard thing to say because I wouldn't want to ever say that like alcohol as a drug 
contributes to, you know, what the themes in my poetry is about or the way I write it or anything. I just think alcohol helps me get into a state of mind. But I mean, I don't just drink when I write. I drink whenever I have free time. You know? <laughs> You're like an alcoholic, sure. <laughs> yeah, just like an alcoholic. Um, supposedly it runs in my blood. Jeez. What? What does your... Like, what kinds of poetry do you write? I like to write experimental poetry, I suppose. Um, but I think I'm still learning a lot. I, I try to experiment, but... I guess the problem with trying to be experimental is when you read experimental stuff, someone's always ahead of you, and you may not get there until you practice for years and years. So, I guess what I'm trying to say is, even though I consider myself experimental, you know, because I try to be experimental, I never am actually happy with calling what I write experimental because I feel like there's always been something done about it, you know, in the sense that everyone says you take your inspirations and make something your own out of it. I usually don't edit as I go. I, I'm a short burst kind of guy. You know, write for an hour or two, don't worry about editing. Make sure I get the general atmosphere and everything. <clears throat> and then I come back. Whenever I can't think of anything to write, whenever I know I can't get any new material out, and then I edit and reshape old poems. That way I'm always being productive and not wasting any potential I have for new material. All right, now we got our egg yolks done. I have this really cheap shaker. It's really good. It doesn't work that well. Mm, rinse that out. So, we'll start with one ounce of homemade dill vodka. Fancy. So you start with one ounce? One ounce of dill vodka. That's done. Yeah. Hey, Michelle. Then you get half an ounce of the cucumber vodka. You drop your lid. You don't need that shit. Um, the reason you only want to use one ounce is because this is very strong. The cucumber flavor goes a long way. And I use the extra large bottles of effing vodka. You need one ounce of your elderflower liquor. You ever had elderflower liquor? Smell it. All right. That's very interesting. One ounce of elderflower liqueur. Bloop. All right. Now, the main ingredient, the mixer. What's your mixer? Fresh pineapple juice. Fresh pineapple juice? Fresh from the can. Dole. On the dole. You know, for two and a half ounces. Mm. Mm. You like my sound effects? Thank you, I appreciate it. I also do sound effects while I write my poetry. Oh, really? Do you? Yeah, no, I don't know. My, my keyboard's kind of like a soft keyboard, so I have to go. You know. Or else it just doesn't feel authentic. So, now we enter an egg white. Bloop. It's gonna be good. All it does is make it really foamy. I promise it's going to be the best. Now you have to shake it without ice first. It's called a dry shake. I learned this on YouTube. Because um, that's how you get it foamy. Right. You have to shake it really hard. Okay. And then you shake it with ice. It's just like the shake weights. Just shake it for like 10, 15 seconds to get it really foamy. 15 minutes. <laughs> shake it for. Just under 13 minutes. Okay. All right. Now, what you want to do is add your ice. Bloop. 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 That's enough ice. This 
so many means of getting published that it's almost impossible to weigh like what you've been published in. You know, I, I don't think I'll ever consider myself real until I see myself in something like Poetry Magazine or something. Because all these magazines that I get into, you know, I've maybe ordered and read one of their books, you know, one of their magazines, but I didn't know about them until I wanted to be published. So who knows how big they are? Who knows who's read me? Who knows, you know, I couldn't go to anyone on the street and they would know my name. But of course, you know, you can go to anyone on the street and ask them who Ann Sexton was or anyone, Yusuf Komanyaka, like anyone like that. They may know Robert Frost, but probably more than half don't. So, I don't know. I don't know what I want out of it. It's a more personal thing, I guess. It feels good to get recognized, to yeah. get acknowledged, but it doesn't weigh as much as just feeling good as writing, you know, writing does, personally. Well, I always use my computer, for one thing. I would never sit in front of a piece of paper. Sometimes I have to when I'm at work, you know, and I feel like I need to write something. I have to write on a post-it note, but mm, if I have a choice, I'm always in front of my computer. I like the light behind the screen. It's comforting. Um, but I guess I, it is a lot of it's burst. I wouldn't say it's, you know, so much burst. You know, I don't know everyone else's writing process, but I don't sit down and just nonstop type something. But I often don't write something unless I know that it's good enough that I'm ready to write it down. I wouldn't write a word, sit there, look up synonyms, like replace it, do all that. I would do that beforehand, before I wrote on the page. Once I get on the page or on my computer screen, I probably won't touch it again until I come back months later. Like once it's out there, it's a, like once I write it on there, it's a poem. Like, yeah. it's part of me that's out there. You know, maybe I can edit it, maybe I can revise it, but it's always that poem and it's always going to be there. Certainly, that's actually a big problem. Like I will never, ever even tell my fiance the ideas I have in my head for poems or anything like that because I'm like critical of myself. I know that it might not be good enough. But once I put it on there, it's good enough. I'll show it to anyone, you know. Or it's good enough to me, I think. So, you know, maybe that helps explain that question. Or answer that question. sitting then I don't know it's weird what do you need me to say I'm 23 and I, I want to do stuff. I've been sitting down for so long. I, I want to get back in the groove and do stuff. I have ideas and I really want to get them out. And I think I have a good chance to do that. So you said this is your dad's case? Uh, this, the guitar and the case used to belong to uh, Savannah's stepdad. Yeah. And uh, she convinced him to hand it over to me, essentially. Sort of, is it like an heirloom, or? Um, I guess so. I mean, it, it can definitely be an heirloom. Um, but it was, it's literally just, uh, it was a Hanukkah gift one year. Nice. She just surprised me with a whole, this beautiful acoustic guitar. It's lovely. I've, I've never actually owned a nice acoustic guitar before. So, how long have you been playing guitar? I've been playing guitar since I was uh, probably like 12 or 13. Um, I've, before that, the only, I never really listened to rock music or anything close to that uh, before then. I grew up uh, on country, 
really. Really? Uh, yeah, I, I, everyone's surprised to hear that. Uh, I, I still like a lot of country, but uh, my, my dad showed me country a lot. He'd play it in the cars, he'd drive us around, but uh, my mom was the one that always listened to rock, and I, I was always like, no, it's too this, it's too weird, it's too whatever. And one day she bought me uh, an ACDC DVD, and I, I watched it. It was a concert from the early 90s, one of their biggest concerts ever. It was so bombastic, and I, it, it, was, it was immediate how much I, 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 I fell in love with rock music and, and, uh, and showmanship and just being able to see how crazy their shows are and all, all these, uh, what's the word? these gimmicks and these shticks and everything. And I thought yeah. it was the coolest thing. And then my... My, my, my interest in the genre just went from there, and I've listened to heavy metal, it's, it's alright to me, I listen to a little bit of metal, uh, some screamo, some emo, everyone goes through a phase, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but punk, punk was something that really uh, hit me, because it, I, I, I got into it like right around the angry teenager phase, and it, I just totally caught on to the whole yeah, I'm, I'm angry, and I don't know how to explain it, so I'm just going to yell, and I'm just going to kick stuff, and I'm just going to take this guitar and just play it until it breaks. Do you write, so do you write your own stuff? I write my own stuff. Um, I performed in a band, so we called ourselves the Educators. It was back in high school. Um, and we, we did probably like 60% covers, 40% original stuff. And I, I guess they considered me just one of the, the lyricists to the band. Probably like half the songs we played were at least contributed lyrically by me. Um, and the, the music, we just kind of Threw, threw shit at the wall and whatever stuck to whatever lyrics we just kind of went with. It was a very haphazard creative, creative process to us. Um, but it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, it was a way to truly really express uh, our feelings towards whatever was going on in our lives. Like, I wrote a song about a breakup and another guy in the band wrote a song about his mom and getting grounded and having no money. And I wrote a song about... I. I just wanted school to end already. It was very. It seemed very juvenile, but because of the scene that we were in, it's. It, it was. It was a bit. It was handled a bit better by audiences. Like it, it. The people that we played for, they didn't really care much about what the song was about. They just wanted to just get the emotions out. You know, if we played loud and fast and shouted enough, then they could get into it. You know, so it was kind of. There, there was this very weird uh, give and take of, I guess, opportunities to emote. You know, it was it was, it was very interesting. It was very nice being able to uh, perform and, I guess, in a way, give that to people mm. and, in turn, receive an opportunity to do that. Um, it's always been an interest of mine. If I got into rock at like twelve or thirteen, then I got into punk at like sixteen or seventeen. Mm -hmm. um, and I just went deep, deep, deep into the rabbit hole that that is. Uh, we're talking The Clash, Dead Kennedys, Bad Brains, uh, Wasted Youth. Uh, I, I, I'm mostly mainstream punk, but the first taste that I had of like local punk, like actual punk, yeah. just poor ass angry people yelling at whatever their problems are, was this band from Philadelphia called Combat Crisis. I had a friend that was into them and they came to Austin a couple times and I saw them and just being able to be a part of a punk audience, which is its own spectacle, just uh, moshing and yeah. hitting people and getting thrown around and being able to just throw yourself onto the stage and just getting thrown right back out like like it's nothing it's just it's a whole it's a whole experience you know and have just being there was fun in and of itself but the whole mantra of it really resonated with me and that was that was probably my uh, the, 
kindle to the fire that would that is uh, that's just being a showman to me. So you you do you consider yourself um, a performer first, or and then a musician second? Because you said that you had done a few other things. You had said you directed some plays, acted a bit. Yeah, I'm definitely not. I wouldn't call myself a musician because I. I don't think I have the, the 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 innate skill or the intelligence to to, to do that. I'm, I'm not going to devote my entire life to that. And if I wanted to, I don't think I could write an entire song by myself. I don't think I could uh, conduct a choir or or pick up uh, in a, 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 another very intricate instrument or whatever. It's just this weird criteria that I don't think I could ever meet. So I wouldn't call myself a musician. But yeah, back in back in high school, I. Uh, I acted a lot. Uh, I got into it, I guess, late elementary school mm -hmm. as part of that like required theater arts class, and and I had fun with it. Um, and when you get to middle school, they said pick an elective, and I my my hand with a pen hovered over band for a moment, and then I kind of moved back over to theater, and I checked that box. Uh, so they put me in intro to theater, and. I just did the class, and it, intro classes, it's just like, this is the history of theater, this is why it's important, this is William Shakespeare. But um, the school musical came around, and I auditioned for it, I got a part, it wasn't a big part, it was just a small uh, little part with a few lines here and there. Um, but after, after the show had ended, and we had our fun, and we sang our songs, and did our dances and everything, I was... I, I just happened to come upon the theater uh, teacher just roaming the halls, just walked up to them and they said, oh, by the way, I, I, had, I have to give this to you. And it was a letter and it said, we want to invite you to the advanced theater class. And that was in middle school, uh, so I don't know how much that's worth, but at the moment I was ecstatic. But back in, back in high school, I, uh, I got a, a couple strong roles here and there, and in, in junior year, in my high school, they saved directing for the seniors. There was a whole block of months at the end of the year where um, where they said, if you're a senior and you want to if you want to direct a show, then you can. We'll pick five people. When that time came around, uh, I happened to go to the director and I said, can I get in on this? And I was a junior at mm -hmm. the time. And of course, everyone else was like, no, you can't. It's just for seniors. You'll get your chance next year, though. But I asked, and she said, sure, let's see what you got. And I directed a performance of Neil Simon's The Odd Couple. Mm -hmm. uh, as soon as I got the opportunity, I knew I wanted to do that right away, because Neil Simon, in terms of theater and acting and comedy, is one of my biggest influences. I love Neil Simon. I, I respect his ability to, to just create comedic timing like that. That's that's the number one thing about Neil Simon is that his creative timing is spot on. It's present in all of his in all of his shows. How do you get into so for acting and or for, for getting on stage, how do you get into that into that kind of uh, zone, I guess? Usually I'm with other people. Um, like before uh, say a play or a uh, or I guess a punk show too. There's usually like a real. We, we have to hype each other up, you know. We would we would do chants in theater class. We would chant, "We ready, uh huh, uh huh. We ready, oh, we ready for y'all." It sounds so dumb when you do it alone, but when there's a whole group of people like that, it, it hypes you up, man. It's pretty awesome. So, do you feel like you? Uh need to get hyped up before? Like if you were doing a one-man show or something like that, well, how would you go about hyping yourself up? Jumping uh, jacks? <laughs> I'd probably do something just to like get some kind of bodily energy out because I there's there's a big difference between just being, uh, you know, I'm going about my normal day or I'm about to perform. It's There, there really is a whole other mindset for it. Um, if I was doing like a one-man show or something, then I would definitely be doing jumping jacks, uh, running around whatever room I happen to be in, and then yelling at myself in front of a mirror, because I, I know I know how to talk to other people, you know, uh, and I when you're when you're in theater and whenever you're in a band, people give you have to give others energy. If you hype people up, then they will get hyped up. They mm -hmm. will match you. So I guess just yelling at myself. Is the, is the answer to that question.